We live in a multidimensional universe, which is part of a multidimensional and infinite consciousness we call God and creation. We are multidimensional beings. Therefore, this has to be multidimensional if it is to make a significant contribution to human freedom. It exposes both the daily manipulation of our lives by a secret clique and presents the spiritual causes and solutions which will bring true freedom to planet Earth and all who live upon her. The latter relates to what we think and feel about ourselves and before I begin to unravel the global manipulation and name some of the people and organizations involved, it is important that I outline the context in which I am presenting these matters. The last thing I want is for people to read this full of anger, hatred, and condemnation for the global manipulators and what they are doing. I don't write this to apportion blame, merely to show what happens when the human race gives its mind away and how rapidly things will change, are changing, as we take it back again. We need to know who is behind the manipulation if we are going to expose what is happening. This exposure will also give those people the opportunity to face their actions and to see that the desire for control and domination of others is an expression of their own deep inner imbalances and dislike of themselves. The lifting of the veil of secrecy will speed the moment when the days of such domination and manipulation are over. But the elite clique which controls the world, the global elite as I call them, are our creation. It is no good hurling hatred and condemnation in their direction for the ills of the world. Yes, as you will see, the same grouping manipulated the two world wars and all the negative events of global significance in this century and before. But without the rest of the human race, they could not do this. An elite few cannot create wars unless thousands or millions are willing to be used as cannon fodder. If people read this can hand the responsibility for what has happened only to the global elite, they are missing the point I am making throughout. What is happening in the world is the here and now reflection of what is going on inside us, the human race. We created this reality. But how? Contrary to what medical science is obsessed with telling us, the physical body is not the whole human being. It is the fantastic physical shell through which the eternalist experiences this physical world. There is far more to us than a body. Creation is the expression of one infinite mind and all life forms are aspects of that one mind, what many people call God. We are each other. We are all God, if you wish to use that term. At the heart of this mind is a consciousness, the source consciousness from which all has been thought into existence. Creation consists of an infinite number of dimensions, wavelengths, frequencies, of reality. This physical world is only one of them. These frequencies share the same space that our physical world occupies, in the same way that all the radio, television, and telecommunication frequencies broadcasting to your area are sharing the same space that your body is occupying now. They don't interfere with each other because they are on different frequencies or dimensions, they are vibrating at different speeds. At the moment we call death, our mind emotion spirit, everything that is the thinking, feeling us, withdraws from the body, the genetic spacesuit as I call it. This eternal spirit moves on to another wavelength of reality, another world, to continue its evolution. This is all that is happening during a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience when people leave their physical bodies for a time before returning to tell remarkably similar stories of what happened to them. Life is forever, for everyone. Our mental, emotional, and spiritual selves are a series of magnetic energy fields interacting with each other via vortices of energy widely known by the Hindu and Sanskrit word, chakra, which means wheel of light. These vortices are spirals of energy which intersect all levels of our being and pass energies between them. It is through this system that an imbalance on the emotional level, perhaps caused by stress, is passed on to the other levels of our being, including, eventually, the physical body. This is how stress causes illness. What we call physical illness is really a multidimensional disharmony or disease. We are constantly absorbing magnetic energy from the cosmos, mostly through the base chakra at the base of the spine. After this life force has passed through our levels of being and we have taken from it what we need, we broadcast the energy out through the chakras back to the cosmos and the world around us, these are the energies that people are feeling when they say that someone gives them good or bad vibes. It is the same when we say a house or place feels happy, welcoming or frightening. What we call atmosphere is created by the vibrations, energy fields, generated by people, either in the moment or in the past. People often feel uneasy at the scenes of battles because they are feeling the energies left there by the pain, aggression, and suffering of those involved. There is a vital difference between the energy that enters through the base chakra and that which we broadcast. That energy is changed in its nature and form when it passes through us. It becomes imprinted with our unique energy pattern and that pattern reflects precisely what is happening inside us at that moment, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Second by second, we are broadcasting an energy field that reflects what we think of ourselves. 
This may not seem to have anything to do with the manipulation of the world, but it is, in fact, at the core of what has happened and continues to happen. You might imagine this process is like casting a magnetic cape or aura around ourselves. Under the law of like attracts like, this magnetic energy field, the outer reflection of the inner person, will attract to it compatible energy fields. Everything is energy, as even mainstream, closed-minded science is beginning to appreciate. A person is a series of magnetic energy fields, so is a place, an experience, a situation, everything. Life is the interaction of these energy fields, all of which have the ability to think and retain information. Energy is consciousness, consciousness is energy. They are the same thing. If it sounds hard to believe that a wall or water or rock can think and retain information, then remember that all contain magnetic energy fields. What is it within the computer I am working on now that retains the information I am writing? A magnetic disk. Same principle. The reason we are drawn to particular people, places, experiences and ways of life is because we are magnetically attracted to them. And that attraction comes from the magnetism of our capes. These capes, in turn, are a reflection of what we think and feel about ourselves. Our lives are an exact physical replica of our own subconscious mind. How it thinks and perceives itself in the world, is recreated physically in the people, places and experiences we attract to us. Think lucky and you'll be lucky. This contains an eternal truth, although it has nothing to do with luck. We attract to us people, places and experiences which connect magnetically with our cape. Therefore, if we believe inside that we will always be poor and downtrodden, that pattern will be contained in the cape. It will become, you could say, the cape of no hope. This magnetic pattern will then attract to it the experiences which ensure that we remain poor and downtrodden. We will have created our own reality. This is so, so vital to understand, in the context of life itself, we create our own reality. Religions in ancient texts going way back have had a common theme of reaping what you sow, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and what you do to others will be done to you. The word by which this process is now best known is karma. Too often this karma is seen in only negative terms. Something unpleasant happens to some people and they say it must be their karma. It is presented as almost a form of punishment. At that level, it is punishment, self-punishment. We created it, not some angry, judgmental, finger-wagging God. If we have imbalances that lead us to act negatively towards others, it is those imbalances that will also attract to us a physical experience, a mirror of what we think of ourselves. In this way what we do to others will come back to us because we will still be holding on to the imbalances, the lack of self-love, that will attract those experiences. If we feel good about ourselves and have a positive view of our lives, we will create that world around us. This is positive karma, creation is about love. Love for self and love for all. Karma is part of that love. It is a vehicle which allows us to face ourselves, unload negative baggage, and move on. It is an aid to evolution, a gift, not a punishment, unless we ourselves decide to make it so. No matter what experiences you have had in your life or you are having now, you, and no one else, created them. The victim mentality creates the victim reality. And, if you believe it, you will achieve it. This creation of reality happens on many levels. The sum total of the interaction of individuals accumulates in the collective mind of humanity. Every species has a collective mind to which all individual members of that species are connected. We add our thought patterns constantly to the collective level and have access to other patterns held at the collective level. It is a two-way process. We give and we receive. Scientists have established something called the hundredth monkey syndrome. They have discovered that once a certain number of individuals within a species learn something new, suddenly the rest of that species can do it without being shown. They do it purely by instinct. Although establishment science cannot explain this by its incredibly limited view of life, the process is very simple. Once that certain number within a species has transferred the new knowledge into the collective level, a point of critical mass is reached. The knowledge becomes powerful enough in the collective mind for it to be accessed by every other member of the species. When they attune themselves to the vibration, the thought pattern, which contains that knowledge, they know how to do something without being shown, because that thought pattern is guiding them. We call it instinct or inspiration when it is really tuning to a vibration, a frequency, that holds that information. All that I have said about the individual creating their own reality equally applies to the collective human mind. It reflects the sum total of human thinking, the sum total of what humanity as a whole think of itself. If humanity doesn't like itself, love itself, and respect itself, it will create that reality on this planet. It will attract to it physical manifestations of how it views its own sense of worth and potential. Only this time, the magnetic cape is not cast around only one person, but the entire planet. This creates the global reality. 
Look at the consequences of this process in our everyday lives. Humanity as a whole wish to give away its responsibility for what happens in the world. When anything goes wrong, we hear the cry, what are they going to do about it? We rarely look at ourselves for responsibility. We may like to complain about politicians and bankers, but most people would still rather others ran the world than accept the responsibility for playing their part. These are the thought patterns which dominate the collective mind and it has therefore created that reality on a collective, global, scale. The collective mind has created a response to that desire for someone else to do it by attracting together the energy fields, people, to construct the secret network which now controls the direction of everyone's lives. We have been given what we asked for, or thought for. It is the same with religions. They, too, are created by the thought patterns of the collective mind, as are the media and other institutions which use fear and guilt for purposes of manipulation and control. These reflect, collectively, what billions of people do in their everyday lives. They manipulate fear and guilt to get their way. Observe yourself for a few days and see how many times you, and others, use fear and guilt to control a situation. We do it without realizing and we pass this attitude on to our children. What is it we say to them? You naughty boy. If you do that again, I'll give you a big smack. Wait till your dad gets home, he'll make you sorry for what you've done. You naughty girl. How could you do that to your mummy and daddy? How could you make us so sad and unhappy? And all we have done for you. These are only minor examples of the way fear and guilt are used on children. From an early age they learn to do the same to others. By the time we reach the adult world and the interrelationships that go on there, the use of fear and guilt for control and manipulation has become an art form. They ought to award medals for it. This thought pattern has consequently dominated the collective mind, and it has created the collective physical reflection of this, the religions and other institutions which tell us what to think and use fear and guilt to control. Again, we created them. They are a reflection of us, the collective us, at least. That's good news because we have the power to remove this global manipulation by removing our personal manipulation. Such a transformation of human perception is so vital to the future of this planet and the world we leave our children. Humanity's desire to give its mind away has allowed a structure to develop over thousands of years which today is on the verge of creating a global fascist dictatorship. Fascism ended with Adolf Hitler? If only it were so. That same mindset controls the secret government of the world which is, minute by minute, manipulating the human mind to accept a centralized global tyranny. This tyranny is called the New World Order and, unless we shake ourselves from our spiritual slumber, it will manifest as a world government, a world central bank and currency, a world army, and a microchip population linked to a global computer. We are astonishingly close to all of those things. It is time to grow up and wake up. This world is merely human thought made physical. When we recognize what those negative patterns are and remove them, our reality will change and the world will change. It begins and ends with us.